We're asked to compute the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the given two by two matrix, matrix A, and then solve the system represented by the vector equation x prime equals a times x. Let's begin by determining the eigenvalues. To do this, we set up the equation, the determinant of the difference of a and lambda i equals zero, and then we solve for lambda. Setting this up, again, we have the determinant of the difference of matrix A and lambda times the two by two identity matrix equals zero. Simplifying inside the parentheses, we get the determinant of the two by two matrix with entries one minus lambda, one, negative one, and negative lambda. And now we evaluate the determinant, which is equal to lambda sub one minus negative lambda minus one times negative one. Simplifying and combining like terms, we have lambda squared minus lambda plus one equals zero. This is not factorable, and therefore to solve for lambda, we apply the quadratic formula or complete the square. This gives us lambda equals one half plus or minus i square root three divided by two. So now we have our eigenvalues. We have lambda sub one equals one half plus i square root three divided by two, and lambda sub two equals one half minus i square root three divided by two. The next step is to determine corresponding eigenvectors for each eigenvalue. Beginning with lambda sub one, we set up the equation, the difference of a and lambda i times vector v equals a zero vector, and then determine a vector v, which will give us a corresponding eigenvector. So again, using lambda sub one equals one half plus i square root three divided by two, we set up our equation. Simplifying inside the parentheses here, the result is the two by two matrix with entries, one half minus i square root three divided by two, one in the first row, and for the second row, negative one, and at negative one half minus i square root three divided by two. You may want to pause the video and just verify this two by two matrix. So again, now we have this two by two matrix times vector v equals a zero vector. Let's continue on the next slide. Recall this represents a system of equations that has an infinite number of solutions or a dependent system, and therefore we can determine an eigenvector using just one of the equations. The first equation is one half minus i square root three times v one plus one times v two equals zero. Solving this equation for v2, we have v2 equals negative one half plus i square root three divided by two times v1. To find a corresponding eigenvector, let's let v1 equal negative two so that v2 doesn't have any fractions. Notice if v1 is equal to negative two, then v2 is equal to positive one minus i square root three. This is a corresponding eigenvector for the eigenvalue lambda sub one. And now we move along to lambda sub two Remember, lambda sub two is equal to the complex conjugate of lambda sub one, where lambda sub one, again, is one half plus i square root three divided by two, and therefore lambda sub two, which we already know, is one half minus i square root three divided by two. But we can also determine a corresponding eigenvector, the vector v two, by determining the complex conjugate of the eigenvector v sub one. We do this by taking the complex conjugate of each entry of vector v one, the complex conjugate of negative two is just negative two, and the complex conjugate of one minus i square root three is one plus i square root three. Now we have a corresponding eigenvector, vector v two for lambda sub two. And now for part b, we want to solve the system x prime equals a times x. Because we have two complex eigenvalues, this does affect how we're going to solve the system. Look in our notes below, if we have a first order linear homogeneous constant coefficient system of ODEs in the form of x prime equals p times x, and p is a two by two matrix with complex eigenvalues. Step one, for each pair of complex eigenvalues, we can find the general solution using just lambda sub one and vector v sub one. Step two, after we determine lambda sub one and v sub one, we write the vector equation x one of t equals vector v one times e to the power of a plus ib times t, Step three, we apply Euler's formula. Step four, we write the result in the form of x1 of t equals x3 of t plus i times x4 of t. And it works out that x3 of t and x4 of t are two linearly independent solutions to the system of equations, and therefore the general solution is x of t equals c1 times x3 of t plus c2 times x4 of t. Where x3 of t is the real part, of vector v1 times e to the power of lambda sub one t, and x4 of t is the imaginary part of vector v1 times e to the power of lambda sub one t. So now, to determine the general solution, 
we only need to consider x1 of t, where again x1 of t is equal to v1 of t times e to the power of lambda sub 1t. This gives us x1 of t equals the eigenvector v1 times e to the power of 1 half plus i square root 3 divided by 2 times t. Before we apply Euler's formula, we write e to the power of 1 half plus i square root 3 divided by 2 times t as e to the power of t divided by 2, or e to the power of 1 half t times e to the power of i square root 3 divided by 2 times t. And now we apply Euler's formula on e raised to the power of i square root 3 divided by 2 times t. So using the first formula, notice that e to the power of i square root 3 divided by 2t is equal to cosine of square root 3 divided by 2t plus i sine square root 3 divided by 2t. And now we perform the substitution, and now we're going to multiply negative 2 times cosine of square root 3 divided by 2t plus i sine square root 3 divided by 2t gives us the first row, and then the complex number 1 minus i square root 3 times cosine square root 3 divided by 2t plus i sine square root 3 divided by 2t gives us a second row, and we still have times e to the power of t divided by 2. And now we're going to break this 2 by 1 matrix up into two matrices, where in the first matrix we have the real parts, and in the second matrix we have the imaginary parts, which gives us x1 of t equals this sum. Again, we have the real part in the first matrix and the imaginary part in the second matrix. And now we can identify x3 of t and x4 of t, which we can use to form the general solution. Going to the next slide, we can now state the general solution, where the general solution is x of t equals c1 times x3 of t plus c2 times x4 of t. And here we have our general solution. I hope you found this helpful.